Hey guys, so I recently did a post uh, on ArtStation of an environment I did in Blender and Marmoset. If you scroll way to the bottom, I showed this thing here, what I call uh, geometric decals. Um, so this is kind of like a non-destructive way of doing uh, decals, except that it actually affects the geometry. So I thought it was a cool way to add some depth to our assets. So today, that's what we're going to be looking at how to build. So the first thing we'll do is create our cutter. So all you need to do is just find an image that has some like bricks exposed and some plaster around it. Um, here I kind of have your like, concrete would mix with some brick. Um, we're just going to grab our knife tool and just kind of curve the cutter around it. Um, so just keep in mind to keep a little bit of a bit of a buffer between where the bricks actually start and the stuff around it. That way our transition will look a bit better. Um, so once you're done cutting around that, uh, we're just going to delete the excess around. And the next thing we can do is just run an inset just a little bit until the it kind of meets the brick and we're just going to push that in onto the y axis and next thing we'll do is we'll grab the outer edges and just extrude that outwards um, we'll run a fill just to cap that off and the next thing we'll do is we'll check our normals and we'll notice that it's turning red so they're flipped so we want to go down to mesh uh, normals and just do a flip so they're nice and blue and there we have our first cutter so fun way to apply this is just uh, place your cursor where you want it um, on your object and then we'll just do a duplicate of the cutter and put that where the cursor is and we just want to make sure that it's kind of floating out a little bit uh, so it's not totally flush against the main object. Uh, next thing we'll do is just apply a boolean modifier and choose the cutter either from the drop down menu or using the eye drop tool to pick the cutter. Um, just for visibility's sake you can always change the cutter to bounds and now you can see that we're actually getting a cut through. Uh, so the material is not showing up currently. Um, so what you need to do is actually click on your main object and do the add material button and just choose the material that was assigned to the cutter. Now that object is going to actually inherit uh, what's in the cutter. So you kind of move that around and kind of do this all in real time. It's really, really cool. Um, so what I usually like to do is just kind of go into the face mode and just kind of like duplicate these things around and just kind of place them and size them up. Uh, of course, when you're sizing things up, just be careful that you have consistent brick sizes um, across all of them. So if you're going to be doing this a lot, I do recommend using some type of uh, add-on. So I'm using Speedflow to uh, do the booleans. So if I just select the main object, run a boolean, I can just kind of quickly cut that out really, really nice. So this is how I did most of the damage in my scene. Um, so we'll go to one of the assets from the scene. Uh, cool thing is you can actually combine a bunch of different cutters together. So in the corners here, I'm using actually two cutters for the corners. So just be careful, like you know, kind of where you put them. Otherwise, they'll kind of be a little bit janky. And of course, you want to make a variety of cutters. So these are the ones that I had. Um, I would really only use like maybe two or three of these. So if you're trying to export this to Marmoset Toolbag or some type of game engine, um, you definitely want to add a triangulate modifier, um, otherwise all the end gods will probably explode in the render engine. Uh, if you have some shading errors, you also probably want to use a weighted normal modifier before export. Uh, anyways guys, I hope that helps. Thanks.